It is 648. You probably just got this alert on your phone. The TBI issuing an Amber Alert for one-year-old Roberto Godinez III from Fayetteville. It's about three hours from Knoxville in Middle Tennessee. He may be with Roberto Godinez II. The TBI says the two may be traveling in a dark gray 2015 Chrysler 200 with front end bumper damage. Godinez the second is wanted right now for especially aggravated kidnapping, among other offenses. If you see them, if you know anything, call 1-800-TBI-FIND. Well, today, the group in charge of selling beer inside Neyland Stadium could have their license suspended. Officials with Aramark will go before the Knoxville Beer Board. The company is accused of selling beer to three underage Knoxville police officers who were undercover inside Neyland this season. The city is also accusing Aramark for contributing Neyland in a disorderly manner, which the company denies. The Knoxville Beer Board is looking to suspend their license for 60 days next season. Today's motions hearing will be virtual and starts at 2 o'clock. Also today, Knox County Commissioners will vote on the future of ambulance services in the county. Mayor Glenn Jacobs is asking commissioners to discontinue its 10-year-old agreement with AMR Ambulance Services starting in June. According to Compass Knox, AMR faces more than $4 million in fines after it was unable to respond to 237 calls in October alone because no ambulances were available due to high hospital wait times. The mayor says by doing so, they can work on a new contract with the company to account for changes in health care since the original agreement was made back in 2013. Tonight's meeting starts at 5 o'clock in the city county building. And right now, we're waiting to find out if an East Tennessee family made it out of Peru after being trapped after protests erupted closing streets. Well, Carmen Simfer from Townsend visited the country with her mom, daughter, and sister. The country impeached President Pedro Castillo erupting deadly protests and trapping the group from East Tennessee. Castillo is accused of trying to dissolve Congress. Protesters blocked the roads, forcing the group to hike six miles around Peru to safety. At last check, the family was in contact with the U.S. Embassy and had a flight scheduled to take off around 1 o'clock this morning. We will let you know when we hear from the family. Also this morning, we're working to learn more about recovery efforts in the Smoky Mountains after a kayaker went under the water and did not resurface. Ditch Dispatch got a call on Friday afternoon that a 61-year-old man disappeared while kayaking above the sinks. Park officials tell us high water levels from all the rain we've gotten is making efforts difficult. Right now, Knoxville police are looking for this man. 44-year-old Jomo Berry from Cordova is accused of shooting at a man and woman at an apartment complex on Adair Drive Thursday morning, then shooting again at the woman that same night on I-40 West. No one's hurt, but investigators say Berry stole the woman's purse when she pulled over. If you see him, call police immediately. And this morning, we're learning more about what happened when police say a naked man broke into a West Knoxville home and a neighbor shot him. According to a report, the suspect, Drake Combs, broke into the Owens house and started destroying the inside. This happened at a home on Westland Drive on December 6th. The sheriff's office says David Owens and his wife ran next door to ask a neighbor for help. That's when the neighbor, Daniel Connolly, allegedly took his gun over to the house and found Combs on top of a car. Connolly allegedly shot Combs with a pistol in the chest after he claimed Combs aggressively charged at him with a windshield wiper in his hand. Police say Connolly fired a warning shot into the ground and Combs did not stop charging. We've reached out to the sheriff's office about his condition and have not yet heard back. And DNA testing is underway right now after a TDOT worker found a human heart in a salt pile in Middle Tennessee. The Humphreys County Sheriff's Office says they believe the heart was in the salt pile for some time before being found on Thursday. The medical examiner's office says it belonged to a man. No other human remains were found. Two Tennessee men are accused of planning attacks on law enforcement and the FBI's Knoxville field office. Austin Carter will be in court on Wednesday for a detention hearing. He faces charges in a separate case for his role in the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. The Department of Justice says Carter, along with Edward Kelly from Maryville, discussed plans to kill law enforcement officials involved in that investigation. Those plans included an attack on the FBI's Knoxville field office. The FBI is still investigating the case right now. Happening today, the man accused of scheming billions out of his investors over cryptocurrency will appear in court. Sam Bankman Freed is expected to agree to be extradited out of the Bahamas back to the U.S. Once he is back on U.S. soil, he will appear before a U.S. judge for an arraignment on charges in a bail hearing. He faces fraud and conspiracy charges and could face more than 100 years in prison. Well, today marks the first full day of Hanukkah. The holiday started last night at nightfall and will continue through the week. It's an eight day Jewish celebration, also known as the Festival of Lights. It involves lighting the menorah every night 
This year, Hanukkah will end on Monday, December 26th. And take a look at the scenes in Argentina, the country celebrating its third World Cup title after beating France on Sunday. Argentinians took over the streets in different towns across the country. Look at this drone footage showing the massive celebration in Buenos Aires as fans celebrate after one of the best soccer games you will ever see. Simple chaos erupting really all across South America as Argentina getting that win. And I guess, you know, South, Af South America considers it a big win for them when they get the win. And WVLT is proud to be your official station of the Vols. Today we should find out where the Tennessee basketball program is ranked coming off a close loss to Arizona on Saturday. In-state foe Austin P comes to town on Wednesday night. It's the final game before the holiday break in SEC play. Tip-off set for 6 o'clock on the SEC Network Plus. And on the ladies' side of things, the team off for over a week now after coming up just short against second-ranked Stanford on Sunday. The team will be back in action next Tuesday night against Wofford. Tip-off is at 6.30. It is 6.55. We want to get a look at the roads with Whitney Turner. You're in good shape getting out the door on this Monday morning as you're moving around Knoxville, I-40, 640, 75. All still looking good ahead of that morning rush. In fact, all of those interstates and main roads running on time as you head out the door. Just a heads up that if you're making your holiday travel plans, this bridge replacement project is still taking place right across that state line in North Carolina along I-40 where you just have one lane of travel open in each direction. I-81, I-26 may be your best bet to avoid significant delays. Your first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Heather Haley. With it already being chilly at five minutes to seven now, this week really overall being cold gets colder. Or we have another cold front on the way. So think of that as kind of doubling down. We'll get a couple of showers late Wednesday. That spreads out to scattered rain Thursday, but here's the actual cold front. So by Thursday night, we get that line of rain to move in, and then we get kind of that back edge what's left to change over to snow. Notice by around 10 p.m. it's snowfall in West Tennessee to Western Kentucky. Then it moves across Middle Tennessee, moves into East Tennessee, but it's also drying up again. It's the back edge. It's what's left that changes over to scattered snow, briefly dries up quickly by the morning, and then we have the cold air that persists longer that lasts longer. That's dangerous here. Really, we're ending the week with highs in the 20s. So a lot of folks are wanting to focus on this snowfall part of the story. But my biggest concern is absolutely the Arctic air. That's why we added the first alert weather day. This morning you're getting out to a chilly 20s. Those highs will be in the 20s by the end of the week. So now these 40s the next few days don't sound too bad. At least if you're trying to get some things done this week, keep that in mind. We're tracking that cold front Thursday to Friday and then those wind chills as well. Coming up on the CW, I'll break that down. My goodness, looking at that and going, no, this is going to be one of the warmer days of the week. Right? Now it doesn't sound so bad, does it? <laughs> it doesn't. 6.56. We're headed over over to WBXX. We got you two more hours over there.